and uh, thanks for uh, purchasing our ECM and uh, I'm here to help you install it and uh, give you a step-by-step -step process that I suggest so let's get after it uh, step one it all starts with the batteries I would uh, definitely uh, check all my batteries thoroughly and uh, and I also would identify where the ECM pulls its power off of sometimes it's off a starter solenoid which is a real bad design and the other standard uh, engineering design would be to run it uh, right to one battery so you should find uh, two hots kind of bundled in and a ground going to one battery maybe split up among batteries which is another bad design and uh, that's the best design if you do have it going all the way up to the starter solenoid and then to the grounding to the uh, body of the starter which is kind of common with the select pluses 96 on which is still a bad design uh, I would just back up and get to where the ECM is and find the two fuses usually there's two fuses in between the ECM and the firewall on the ground for the ECM they're 10 amp fuses and I'd run brand new wires in the ground to a brand new battery okay and then I would uh, start checking my grounds there's a major ground it's your battery area going to the frame and I'd take all those uh, terminals off at the battery and clean them all up and inspect them and replace them where needed and then head up to the starter area there's a ground strap uh, usually going to the engine from the starter and then another major ground going to the starter to the frame such if you uh, decided to kind of keep that ECM situation where it's pulling the power off the starter I think you'll find normally a couple of purple hot wires and a ground wire up there okay so and before you install your ECM we highly suggest that you put a new fuel solenoid electronic solenoid it's got one terminal on it it's controlled by the ECM uh, the power supply and ECM makes your solenoid click in and uh, it also powers up all your 5 volt reference and the power to fire your injectors so uh, and I'd also suggest to ohm out all your wiring especially your injectors they all have individual electronic fuel solenoids on them and if you see any big variance in the uh, resistance uh, especially if one drops out then you know replace that uh, fuel injector or uh, fuel injector and um, and on that note you cannot buy the injector separately so if you got a bad injector electronically then you're going to have to get a, another one uh, to replace it uh, the other high fail item that I'd replace is the cam sensor or engine positioning sensor that runs off your front timing gear down there it's got four wires coming out of it uh, it hasn't been replaced for a while they look like uh, five six seven years they go bad and on the earlier ones uh, it's just something that is going to haunt you down the road it controls your timing of the firing of the engine and uh, a sure tail sign is that oil is dripping out of the back of it because they uh, they uh, start seeping oil through them either through a hairline crack and it gets into the back of the boot and the wiring turns to kind of mush 
and then uh, it can actually short out the ECM and uh, do damage. So, you know, I think the uh, fuel solenoids a little over a hundred bucks, and uh, shop around, you can probably get an engine positioning sensor for around sixty-five bucks. Um, and that's pretty much it. And double check your fuses in between the ECM and the firewall. Make sure they're good. And also check the voltage. If there's any kind of voltage drop, something might be going on. And on that note, why I'd like to wire the ECM between the, put new wiring in between the ECM and the firewall with the two fuses and the ground runner right to one battery is because I've seen those wires because the, the hot and the the two hots in the ground are bundled together and they get so hot from low voltage that they melt together and then the the uh, ground and the uh, hot are like seeping through and then that just can possibly burn up your ECM or it'll make it so erratic and sometimes it won't throw fault codes and just drive you nuts and cost you a lot of money. So. Again, this is my best advice to you installing it. Um, you can put a little uh, dielectric grease on the, just a little bit on the terminals around the, the O-ring and stuff to kind of seal it off there. You don't want any water to get in there and you, want, want, and you don't want it to corrode. Uh, our ECM, as you can see, is all powder coated and uh, on the base plate it's not powder coated it's completely uh, sanded off and that's not for grounding purposes so much it's for heat transfer so when you get your old ECM off you probably want to go ahead and sand that down that cooler plate where it's mounting to so it can have good heat transfer going in there and um, if you uh, have any problems at all after you install it, um, just give me a call. And, uh, and keep in mind, look over your injector harness and your sensor harness. And if they look questionable, I just, if I'm going to keep the truck, it probably costs you six, seven hundred bucks for the two harnesses. But I would uh, get them on there and... Uh, you can have some good, good uh, trucking ahead of you, not worrying about uh, it downing you, especially if you drive nationwide. So just give me a call if you need any more help, and uh, if you have any fault codes or any issues at all, call me first. Let me see what we can do for you before you pay anybody to touch your truck and do anything. So, <laughs> hope this ECM worked out good for you. And uh, said you got a minimum of 12 month warranty. Some people are buying two years, some people are buying five year. Just depends on how long you're going to keep the truck. Thanks a lot. 810 653 6300 if you have any more questions.